Uh, so the Kona Action Committee will now come to order. It's Tuesday, May 21st, 2024. 20, uh, it's 12, 12 p.m. So the this meeting is held in person and on uh, interaction uh, interactive conference technology. The meeting will also be recorded on Zoom. As a reminder per Sunshine Law, uh, action committee members appearing remotely must keep their cameras on and announce anyone who is in the in the room, except for miters, in their location. I don't believe we have anyone online. So just a reminder. Okay, so um, I'd like to just start off with a Alelo no Eal. It goes like this, Hanao ka Aina, Hanao ka Ali'i, Hanao ke Kanaka which means born is the land, born are the chiefs, and born are the commoners. And what this uh, describes to us is that we are all one, we're all together, and that's how uh, our common goal is to make sure we all prosper. Um, we'll have the roll call. Um, I'll start by saying, uh, my name is Charles Young. Uh, I have, I'm the chair at this point, and I'm going to let uh, each one of the uh, um, committee members introduce themselves. I'll start over there with you, David. If it's okay. David Huerta. And Heather Karate from Captain Cook. Nancy Psikio, Vice Chair. And John Bells here from Palawa. And um, who's, who's absent then? Do you know? Oh, sorry. sorry. Oh, sorry. Okay, so can you introduce yourself and uh, let us know if there's anyone in the room with you other than minor children? Um, no, just myself. Okay. And you are? Uh, Rosa and Molina, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Okay, now I'd, I'd like the staff to introduce themselves as well. Like Jessica Lahib, Long Range Planning Staff. Well, Long Range. Headache. And Mariam Palmer uh, with the County Planning Department. Thank you. Okay, just housekeeping. Uh, keep your cell phones off. Uh, please are on silent mode. Um, if there's anyone who in the room who plans on testifying, uh, please fill out uh, uh, or put your name on one of the cards. I, I believe you have them there, yeah? And and on what item you want to testify on. And we'll, we'll take it the testimony uh, in order of the, the item number. However, if you wanna testify before the item number comes off on, uh, you can testify at the beginning of the meeting or you can wait uh, until the item uh, comes up for discussion. Okay, and we are trying to record this via the OWL here. So uh, I'm gonna ask if you're gonna Testifying person, maybe we move a chair up to the front, you know, so we can get okay. So the first, the first business is to um to approve, approve the minute minutes. It's uh twelve sixteen, and uh, so we uh, committee will now consider approving the draft minutes from the April sixteenth. Uh, 2024 meeting. I have motion to approve. Okay, so I have a motion. I'll second it. John seconds. Okay, discussion. I, I had one comment uh, on the meetings, and uh, I was I had addressed this earlier. I think is to much of the testimony uh, is uh, time stamped. Uh, as YouTube, but we're not getting the minutes where it's actually typed out. So I, I was a little concerned about if people don't have YouTube, uh, what are the limitations or how we're going to address that okay, with the time stamping. And I think, Miriam, I don't know if you have any, you want to comment on that? Uh, so, um, I believe our current procedure for minutes right now is that 
it's it's called a, I believe a summarized version of minutes where we do a hybrid of including YouTube timestamps um, along with writing out and summarizing pieces of what happens in the committee. So my understanding is um, things like uh, public testimony will be recorded with the person's name if they registered or just as testifier number blank. Um, and then with their YouTube timestamp uh, that associated with when they spoke during the meeting and then YouTube's time timestamps throughout the minutes for when each item is called throughout the agenda. And then there should be a summary of what the committee discussed about the agenda item and any motions or voting would be like verbatim writ written in there along with the voting. Um, I think what Uncle Charlie's bringing up is that the my, correct me if I'm wrong is the public the public testimony that having that also summarized or or written out in some way along with the timestamps is the request. Um, but I and I and right now we're kind of we're kind of in this phase of kind of cleaning up our procedures and policies on how we're doing these. Um, these different protocols per sunshine, as long as we keep these YouTube videos online um, indefinitely, then 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 these uh, time stamped minutes are allowed. Um, but also we're trying to work we're, we're in this transition where we're trying to find the right fit for what works for these committees and how we're recording them and everything like that. So if the committee um, wants to share some suggestions or opinions on how, they want these minutes, they would like to see these minutes and that's something that we can uh, work on incorporating. Um, the summarized minutes is a little helpful in terms of staffing wise, it makes it a little bit faster, um, but also kind of helps point people to the YouTube at the same time, just some people like that too. So I see both sides, I see this, there's the concern, well, what if people can't get online to YouTube but they have access to the minutes and um, and so having a, a complete summarized minutes might be a, a something, but um, nothing's written quite in stone on how exactly we're doing all these things. So uh, I, I would definitely say that we're interested in hearing how you all feel about it and that we can start working on cleaning up these, it's kind of the transition that we're in anyways. So, yeah. I'm Miriam, this is Nancy. Uh, hi, how are you today? Good, how are you doing today, Nancy? Good. So uh, I guess I think that this format is a little too bare bones. And I, I think I probably share Charlie's concern that there should be a little more substance to the summary. Um, you know, as you know, I volunteered to do minutes and I provided some minutes. Mine were, of course, much more lengthy than this. But I think for context sake, you know, I don't want to have to go through the YouTube, quite frankly. I'd rather see a, a summary of the meat of the matter so that's my opinion. I don't think it needs to be all um, transcribed, but I think that a summary of the high points or the important issues, especially if it's going to lead to, you know, further agenda items or further discussion, um, and it's not a concluded issue, should be summarized. I see it, and I appreciate it. Any um, does it? Any other committee members? Like yeah, to add yeah. in the, um, are we allowed to uh, transcribe the Zoom meeting? The question is, are we allowed to trans? I'm sorry, can you say the question is? So Zoom has a transcription option. So I just wanted to know if that's allowed in, as part of protocol. Yeah, it is. It is allowed. We've we spent a good chunk last year. Um, playing with the different type of technologies to help us transcribe these minutes to kind of expedite the process, efficiency and whatnot. And um, some of it has to do with just, you know, we don't have, we don't have a setup quite like say council chambers does. Um, and so it, it gets hard sometimes even just, just for, to, to hear. Um, and so then that obviously affects the transcription, but even, even under like, in, even in our best meeting um, environments, the transcription service um, of Zoom and, and we've tried multiple other platforms is, has been not, it just, 
it's not quite up to par yet. Um, it's we still have to go and do a lot of cleanup to the extent that it's, we might as well have just done it ourselves in the first place. Um, and, it, and that's a combination of, you know, the technology, but also just even the way we speak here and the Hawaiian, a lot of the Hawaiian words that get brought up in, and it, it, it the, the, the software just doesn't really catch it quite, even in regular English words also, it doesn't catch good. So it's, it's just not quite there. It's, that's what we found at the end of last year. Yeah, we spent quite a time, bit of time going down that road. Is Teams an option for how to use Microsoft Teams? Microsoft Teams, is that an option for accounting use? Can you say that again? I'm sorry, I guess it's kind of far away from one of the mic. Teams. The teams? Team, is that an option for county use? Microsoft Teams? Um, I guess we could, I believe we, as a section, we haven't done it before, um, but because um, you feel that the transcription uh, capabilities of Microsoft Teams is is better? Yes, dramatically. Okay, that's just something that we can look into. And I, I would imagine, so when Nancy was helping us do minutes um, some meetings ago, um, she actually, I believe you uploaded it into Microsoft Office, right? And it created that first draft that you went to clean up after. Maybe yeah. it would be a similar it algorithm voice recording and transcribed it into written text. Right. And there was some correction that needed to be done where I didn't hear it, but I took the MP4 recording and transcribed it into a text doc, to Microsoft Word actually. Yeah, yeah. Well, we can, I, I, I don't have the list in front of me of all the services and softwares that the team tried out. Um, we sent, we sent, uh, an intern down that rabbit hole and he kind of did a bunch of different tests. So, um, but we could, we, I can go back and see if Teams was one of the ones that, that they tested and how it compared to the others. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, is there any more discussion on the minutes? We have a motion to approve and a second. I second it. Okay. So, all in favor, please, but uh, approving the minutes of the last meeting, which was let me get that straight, uh, April sixteenth. Uh, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Uh, nay. Hearing none. Okay, so the minutes are approved. So um, I've already briefed you on public testimony. Is there anyone who wants to, before we get into the business question, um, just speak to any of the business items before we get into the agenda items? You gotta wait for okay. business items. Okay. Um, is there anyone online that wishes to provide any testimony on the agenda items at this point. If not, we're gonna we'll we'll go to the first business item. So we can open discussion on the first item, which is the Kealakehe Regional Park update. And I believe uh, John's gonna help us with that. Yeah. So um, I sent out a photo. I think you developer added that to the agenda. Um, and sorry, it was so big, it printed weird when I printed it. But uh, last week there was a curriculum showcase at Calakehe High School, which I went to for to see a couple of things. But one of them I wanted to see is there have this new academy model. Um, it's called Sustain, and the one that was interesting to me was the Sustainable Communities Academy. And they actually focused their kind of it's it's a way for different teachers to talk about a subject throughout or talk about topics throughout different subjects. So my spouse is a math teacher and then there's some, a civics teacher and some other stuff. So they did it over the Calgary Regional Park and they presented this. Um, it kind of expanded more into parks in general, kind of, and you can see in some of the pictures it talks about homelessness and inflation, 
it was a it was an interesting starting off point for a lot of topics about the community. And uh, on the picture you can see on the it's hard to see, but we linked to the community development plan, and a lot of people were a lot of people were really engaged with this. It was it was really nice to see a lot of people asked about the community development plan, the differences with it, and the general plan. <clears throat> How this all kind of related in a lot of people you know weren't aware of these plans for a park they're excited to hear about it it was a really nice uh it, it you know the the pre the point of the presentation was to present what the school is doing and what the sustainable uh academies similar communities academy was doing uh but it was it, it really engaged a lot of people and it engaged a lot of the students too i think that was the goal of the teachers um so that was a really positive experience. And I feel like it reached a lot of like this kind of outreach we were trying to do with the committee. I didn't, I didn't put this on at all. It was just something I went to and helped out with. Um, yeah, so I just thought that was great. And I wanted to bring that up. Um, we were, people, but you know, we linked to the community development plan. A lot of people were interested in it. Um, yeah, so hopefully more engagement from, from those people in the future. Regarding the park itself, I don't have, unfortunately, a lot of, updates on it. There was a YPAC board meeting. I've been out of Kona since basically the last meeting. I've been traveling a lot, but there was a YPAC board meeting that I missed. Um, and we still don't know about this. I don't think we're going to get, well, I think it would be nice to try to continue to push the parks department to give us an update as a committee. Um, Cause until that happens, I don't think we're going to have any new information on it. There's this, you know, meeting I keep talking about that I'm hearing from the YPAC board, um, which still has not been scheduled. <laughs> Uh, so until we can get one of the two, and I don't know the best way about approaching, you know, continuing that to the parks department to give us an update besides asking planning department to ask them to do that. And I don't know if that's going to be super fruitful. Um, so until we can get one of those to happen, I think my idea is to continue to push this kind of outreach uh, portion of it where we're continuing to get more people you know, um, informed about the park and informed about how it fits into the community development plan, how it fits into the general plan, and how this is what the county is saying they're trying to do, but we haven't been doing it yet. Um, yeah, and hopefully soon we can get one of these updates and uh, for the parks plan. I think that would give us more info. Yeah. Um, this is Nancy. Um, I think we briefly discussed it, I, I think. Um, what do you think about us as the AC doing a formal letter to Parks and Rec requesting their presence that they give an update at one of our meetings? Yeah, yeah. Because the staff's been an awkward position, you know, of saying, well, the action committee wants an update and them telling something to the staff and then coming to us. I think, you know, it's, the park is part of this ordinance. Mm -hmm. And I think, they need to, you know, treat that issue more seriously and be accountable to at least coming and facing us. And, yeah, yeah. And so what do you think about the idea of us making a motion to, to write a letter that was Charlie and the chair signing it, requesting their presence? And we could, you know, talk about what key questions that should be addressed. And, yeah. I and we already true. know what the questions are, and they probably already know, but I think they should come in, in a public forum and... Yeah. Talk yeah. about it. Yeah. So would that be something I would just write up and bring to everyone or at the next meeting or? Well, I, we I, I think probably, I don't think that'd be necessary. I think we kind of know what the questions are. I think it'd be more a matter of us making a motion that that go forward like we have with previous correspondence. Yeah. And yeah. Um, what do you think, Charlie? I think we can do it in this meeting. Um, what I'd like to suggest is, I mean, Heather's come up with a lot of questions and maybe for the sake of, um, you know, rather than just giving them one option to come and talk to us uh, or maybe present that list of questions and we try and narrow it down to maybe the real key ones. Mm -hmm. So we can send it, send that as a formal invitation to answer certain, you know, certain questions. And so what are the important ones and just give them you know, an idea of what what we are interested in having them answer. An update. <laughs> yeah, and they can do that in writing if they choose. Well, I think they should come. Well, 
Okay. Yeah. yeah. I mean, and we can decide. I mean, my questions, one section was more general and one was for the old days. Mm -hmm. um, the general plan. So, I mean, we might want a more general. I think one of the things we'd want to decide is do we want a more general presentation or do we want to start with KLA? -K um, yeah, yeah, I mean, I... I think a general one would be good. I mean, this the old A expansion is also really mm -hmm. important, yeah. you know, and probably more achievable at this time almost. Um, so I think, I don't know. I think if we can ask some questions, maybe generally about old A and about Cal A and ask them to uh -huh. present. I think probably we probably already know pretty specifically the key questions as far as Cal A. So yeah. it's not like it needs to be a big long thing. We just I think they just should come in this public venue and mm -hmm. approach the issue with the public. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. not us, it's this is a public venue. Right. Yeah. We probably need to make it look like sound approachable, like they're not walking into like a mine, a landmine. Um, That's too. like I like guess specific question yeah. to be more practical. Than, yeah. So it's not yeah. like a yeah. political right. emotional agenda, but it's specific just, information is being yeah. sought. That's good. Yeah. I I had a question about I know it's the end of the school year, but um did anything bubble up from the students for actions or recommendations? And if not I think it would be a good opportunity for a few of us to go and lead maybe a session with the high schoolers. Yeah, and oh, something I forgot to mention too is that Rebecca Villegas did come to the school and meet oh, with them, cool. which is another cool part of it. Yeah, awesome. Um, I know discussions with, you know, my spouse specifically were like, you know, there was a lot of people who didn't want this part, but a lot of people who were concerned about the upkeep of parks in general in Hawaii, and why are we going to add another one when these other ones are? Upkept. So that's where it spiraled into a lot of talk about like homelessness and um, things like that. I know my spouse's was a lot of like, if she was doing math, so it was like, how do we fund, you know, maintenance and things like that. So that was the other thing, you know, mm -hmm. we talked about this last time, you know, that bathroom burned down in old day, and now there's no bathrooms at old day, you know, things mm -hmm. like that are, were important to, them to yeah. make sure those were better. So that was kind of what I heard that had bubbled up. Uh huh. Yeah. Okay. So not any clear like recommendations or actions, maybe. No, and you know, maybe I, I didn't get enough time to talk with the civics teacher about mm -hmm. it and that might have been more. I, I could reach out to him and we'll ask him. But and, yeah, I mean, I mean this is the last It is school, the last week. Yeah, so maybe yeah. we, that I mean I think that this would be something and this is Heather Karate talking, um, something we want to like earmark for mm -hmm. next school year. Yeah. And potentially if this group has recommendations connecting them. I think it's called the Youth Commission, Miriam. Is that, remember what we were talking about? But there is a Youth Commission that does propose like legislation changes. And, you know, so it might be an interesting partnership of like connecting yeah. high school students with them. No, it's a great idea. And this was the first year they've done this. So they're kind of learning. Next year, I think they're awesome. going to focus on water because. Uh, similar to us, how a lot of water discussion has bubbled up with this park, um, that kind of bubbled up with them too. So um, I can stay engaged with that. We can stay engaged with that and try to connect with them. It'd be interesting to see if, you know, I I have such an in with Calakehe, but I don't know if like Kona Wine is doing something like this or some of the smaller schools too, you know, to, to be in touch with them about this stuff. I know um, Innovations Public Charter School, they dive into watershed every year like they okay. that was a big field of our area of study this year and again will be next year so there, that would be an interesting mentorship with middle school and high school yeah, yeah. Um, so I have an in there okay yeah I know they were really um thankful for having me and, and bringing the knowledge of these plans to them and stuff so mm -hmm. we can keep doing that with the schools I think that's really helpful regarding getting a letter written yeah um would a good suggestion be for you two to narrow your questions down and come up with the draft. So I just have a question about that. That seems I would love that. Can we circulate it for approval outside of this meeting? Yes, I believe so. Because uh, that's um, what I thought we couldn't do. Miriam, if if uh, if two of our committee members um, draft the letter that I eventually sign, does it need to come back to the board for approval? Or, or review and or, or review and approval, or is it just something that you know, I believe we can technically um, have them if we if we 
if we have the motion kind of basically spelling out that you guys are giving them those rights and that whatever you guys finalize, that you guys all agree to send forward um, with Uncle Charlie's signature, I, my understanding is that that's possible. Um, There's that it wouldn't need to come again once you have the draft. That we could, you guys could just decide that, yeah, we designate Heather and John um, to write this letter. Um, yeah, I think that's possible. I mean, on the one hand, I don't mind doing that. On the other hand, I feel a little uncomfortable not giving the group the opportunity to review and comment on it. Well, I think we don't want to, this is going to be pretty simple. Okay. okay. If you get this big long thing, you're you get it. I mean, it should be as succinct as possible. Okay. You want an update on it. <laughs> okay. See. And base it on the CDP. Uh -huh. You know, it's don't, you know, it, it should be something they can refer to in the documents. And, and collectively, it's already something that, mm -hmm. that's in the CDP. And, okay. so, well, and basically, we want an update, you know, from Parks and Rec mm -hmm. on these specific projects that have been adopted as actions in our plan. Would you please come to the meeting? And give us an update. So open ended. And well, not... that's what, that's what you, you guys said. I mean, I know what the questions would be regarding Kalakehe because we've already gone through this, mm -hmm. you know, just first added questions on your list. I think mm -hmm. you should boil it down as much as possible. And um, maybe you want to separate it. I think it's something um, is we could also, I, I, I'll double check with Gina on this, but I'm pretty sure. If you guys give us the draft, I think planning can BCC it out to everybody. And if anybody has anything like so problematic with it, then you know we can we can work on it from there. But if you just want that peace of mind and that is generally okay, that can be. I'm pretty sure we can do that. It shouldn't yeah. contain things that aren't based in the plan. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm cool with that. I think mm -hmm. it's a good idea. So we don't spend the rest of this meeting. Yeah. For me, yeah. questions and yeah, yeah. We probably so, have questions too. so I motion that John and I come up with a draft for Parks and Rec going over just a general update, old days, and Kayla K. And come to the meeting to address so an invitation to address mm -hmm. the AC at mm -hmm. one of our near meetings <laughs> and the letter to be sent to the director. Yeah, oh, I think, so. I think so. I'll second all that motion. <laughs> yeah. Okay. okay. Uh, is there more discussion then? Do we need to put a little more focus on that? Or are we okay? And so uh, you'll get the draft, Miriam, and you'll blind, you BCC all of us. I'll BCC all of you. Yeah, I can do that. Okay. Do we want to uh, make the motion? Or did uh, that? Uh, we made them all for you to BCC us. Is that a no, no, I'm sorry. Did I miss the? You guys yeah. made the motion already. Yeah, we made the motion to uh to designate uh John and Heather to come up with a letter. And as far as awesome. discussion, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, I think it's a good approach for us as the AC to you know assume this position instead of putting staff in that position because I don't think it's actually fair mm -hmm. to put staff in that position. I agree. And so I think. Yeah, we we were here, and you know we're supposed to be overseeing this process to some extent, and and so I think they should come and face us, and we should be the one to uh, extend the invitation. So I think this is a good move, good strategy. We'll see what comes of it. Yeah, <laughs> hopefully we'll get a response. Okay, so we we have a a motion, and uh, I'm just going to call for the question. All in favor of the motion, and um, can I just not repeat it and say? They, we, we've delegated two people to write a, Heather and, and John to write a, a letter to the director of the um, Parks and Recreation. So all in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Nay. Hearing none. Okay, that motion is carried. Thank you, you uh, two, for volunteering to work on this. Yeah, thank you for the suggestion. Okay, if there's no other testimony uh, on this item or comments, uh, I'm going to close this item. And we'll open agenda item four. I believe it's four. 
uh, in for item two in, in business item four. Uh, this is going to be a dis discussion of implementation, uh, priorities, and community outreach. Um, let me read the whole thing. So discussion and decision making on the committee's priorities and strategies on potential community action items. This may include establishing uh, permitted interaction groups. So if I can just, it's kind of like a broad subject, but what we were attempting to do, I think we'd put in, place it on the agenda in this way is because at our last meeting, we had a lot of discussion of where the priorities were and all of us had priorities, some of which were the same and some of which maybe were a little different. Um, so we wanted to have an agenda item where we could we could maybe flesh those out, and then if committee members would like to make suggestions on creating a permitted uh, interaction uh, a group, we could do it at this meeting as opposed to having to wait, you know, for another uh, for another meeting. So this is um, I think this is an opportunity now for us maybe to flesh out a little bit more what we talked about the last time. And what what kind of priorities maybe we feel we should we should uh, agree upon, and then you know perhaps uh, establish permitted uh, interaction groups, and this again would help facilitate us doing some of the outreach that we uh, we feel is so important. So discussion. Um, my guess, my discussion right now isn't a specific topic, but the mechanism. Um, you know, when I came, started coming to the meetings about a year ago, my, as I expressed multiple times, my interest is to do more community outreach. And so we formed a community outreach subcommittee, which they were calling a fig at the time. But then a few months went by and Pro Council informed us that we were operating as a subcommittee and we weren't operating legally. And so all the so-called what were operating as pigs at the time were um, disbanded. That included the um, Kona Open Space Network um, pig was disbanded. And um, so we kept, you know, how can we do community outreach under these circumstances? So the, the pig concept was discussed as a community outreach mechanism where more than two of us could get together and work on a specific topic, whatever that might be. And instead of having an ongoing pig on a particular topic, we if we wanted to do, for example, a public present host a public presentation, we could say, okay, we're going to form a pig to do a public presentation on the update for parks or something, for example. And three or four of us could work together outside of these regular monthly meetings and um, contact people, invite people to do presentations, and organize a meeting and then hold a meeting. And then when it's all done, come back to the group and say, okay, we're filing our completed report and then the pig disbands. So it's a mechanism. It's a tool that as far as the restrictive nature of the sunshine law would allow us to do more public outreach activity. So I, I think it's a good idea for that purpose. I don't have the specific, issue that I want to join a pig for right now, but I like the idea of being able to utilize the process and have that as an opportunity to get some of us to work together outside these meetings on topics we're interested in and be willing to work together and not just sit here once a month and go home. Let me discussion. Well, we were having this discussion with the with the members here earlier about water, and that's that's kind of where I'm devoting most of my time, even outside of this meeting. Uh, and it, it, you know, it concerns uh, water affects everything that's on this list. It's kind of like a general subject. It's not a really specific one that's on here, but I think that's something that would. Um, at least for the action committee to be aware of, is to try and get an update of, of where the water situation lies. Though, um, I mean, we had we had talked earlier outside of the meeting about all the um, 
the vagaries of it, the vagaries of it, where we don't have a water use development plan from the county, how that affects seaworms decisions, how that's going to affect potential development, the the um, discussion that the community is having over what are the priorities for water usage if we're going to keep drawing. Uh, uh, there's also discussion on on uh, the community's concern about how we utilize the water and then don't get it back to RS1. Uh, we go ahead and inject it back or use it to uh, put it back on the land at RS2. So I think there's a lot of complexity in the usage of the water, but uh, it's it's going to, I think, um, it's even affecting Kealakea in the regional park, as we well know. Mm -hmm. So I know that's a very general topic, and maybe if we establish the, um, a pig, then we can start to focus in on what uh, areas uh, and that we want to, we can focus in on the areas that are our, of our most concern, then maybe reach out not just to the community, but to the departments that are, first off, I would say the water department uh, on the issues and then start to narrow that, narrow that down over how long it takes to do it. And then we can bring a report back uh, to the AC as to how that's going to impact many of the other issues here. Now, I know that's really broad. It's not going to hit one specifically, but it might might help us with KLK in terms of the, the things you, you, you know, you're trying to get. Because uh, from past discussion, um, I know you've gone to the mayor's office, to, to, to I think to the mayor, or at least the mayor's representative, and they're saying it's, they don't know. Uh, and it's, so and and that might be the right answer, but I think I think there's a lot of other you know, those to run around. So maybe we can we can bring we can have a committee that will help us focus on that outside of this this meeting. Go ahead. Do you think um, a first step would be for and I'd be happy to work on this with you to draft a letter to the water department asking them with like. You know, the park one, I just pulled things out of the CDP. We could mm -hmm. draft some questions similar to what we're going to do for parks, ask them for a presentation, but with specific questions. And then that would help us, like, one, it would give us some education of where we're at, and it could help us maybe narrow something down and figure out how and what we want to do with the community. Is that feel too slow no uh, i think i think the letter would be much quicker i'm not sure what we would what value that would be to us in terms of looking at the whole picture you know because the water environment i don't think they're going to address the park mm -hmm. but but that doesn't that doesn't mean we shouldn't do it write the letter uh -huh. uh, similarly to what we're going to do you know in terms of uh trying to get the Parks and Recs to answer specific mm -hmm. questions. So, mm -hmm. I mean, we could ask them specifically what the water use, whether the where the, where the uh, water use development plan is with the county. Mm -hmm. I can draft that if if mm -hmm. if, if you you're okay on with that. Then I'll do the same thing with the other letter uh, as we would with the other letter. Uh, mm -hmm. Get circulated around for everybody. Yeah, to me that seems like an efficient, clear way. Starting forward. point. Okay. <laughs> Um, okay, so that that's not, we don't need to do a big bet on that. We just need a motion, I guess, if people are satisfied. Yeah, I'll motion to have Uncle Charlie draft a letter to the water department or any other partners for questions about water usage that pertain to the Kona CDP and ask them to come present to us. Mm -hmm. I'll second that. Okay. Uh, any discussion? It was uh, interesting because I um, watched the YouTube of the State Water Commission meeting that was held on March 19th. And another one was held in April. Uh, that's not the like, yes, there were two. Uh, I've only saw the one. It's on my list. Uh, and um, and that was extremely educational um, in terms of how much I didn't know about 
the state consideration in improving wells. And this was over the, I guess, the petition to approve the Oto well. And um, how much discussion and lack of knowledge there was in the discussion about even approving that one well and who who would benefit and who would be harmed and the potential and why just on that one well not the, and the need for a regional a Kona regional plan and that the the board members on the commission themselves said they knew of how much water was falling at Malco but they didn't know how much was being extracted mm -hmm. so I mean and. So they didn't know, I mean, I mean, they, and they realized that there needed to be more region, regionalization of planning in terms of water use and water extraction. And of course, that's the whole point of CDPs is to look at things in more detail in terms of how it's affecting a region. And I thought that they were sort of saying, hey, we need a regional plan for water use and Kona. And that's a big topic just in itself, but it was, uh, very interesting to watch the entire meeting. I learned a lot just from that. Mm -hmm. Could you send that to us or is that um, letting us I don't us? remember now whether I did or not, but I will. And yeah, I guess there's gonna be an ongoing discussion. I think I you got his email. Okay. I'll send that's on my list. Okay. I think it's not the I think you saw it. I'm, I'm I saw the one where Loke uh, testified. Yeah. I'll send you the new one. Okay, okay. What yeah. you said. And they still hadn't decided. <laughs> yeah. So before we uh, vote on the motion, I would like to invite everybody who has some interest in the water issue. Maybe to help us to in case we might we might be able to add additional points that we may want to put in the letter. Keola, you were going to testify on this at least on this agenda item, maybe not on the specifics of the water, but I'd invite any of you to do so. Uh, before we motion to write the letter, so so we can include your comments if if they're you know appropriate. I'm not sure what you're saying. Are you asking? Okay, questions? so we have a motion on the table right now. For <laughs> myself <laughs> to write a letter to the water to uh, the Department of well, Water Supply. I think. Are, are you inviting our comment on that motion? I'm inviting your comment uh, comments so that the the committee can hear. If there's something of import that we should be including in our letter that we don't miss the community's response. I would have one thing to add, if that's okay. To well, of course. Yeah, of that's... I don't you think you of... testify, didn't you? Yes. Yeah, he and I do testify. have other things to testify about. But... Uh, well, but let's get past this motion first. Let's get past this motion first, because we have a motion on the table that I'd like to just Go ahead and vote. If you guys have no comments, then we're just going to do the motion. I have a comment on your motion. Okay. And that is that um, rather than just bring the water department manager to explain what he is, because I have to speak right now, uh, trying to do and where his hands are tied, etc., that uh, to be more active, proactive, I would suggest you consider at least asking the mayor to come along as well. And he would probably, he may come, he may send a representative, but in my own mind, this is a mayoral level, top of executive branch point of getting engaged to be proactive to help break the ice and all these different lattice layers that things are tied to the water issue. That water department manager alone will not be able to solve our problems. Mm -hmm. and it would be ideal to even have a governance representative because this is a gubernatorial level problem as well. But the mayor, in my view, is our advocate to help find solutions, right or you know, whichever way it is to fall, and not expect the water manager to be able to solve what you need to have for answers. So my suggestion would be to at least reach out to the mayor, if possible, to to attend or send a informed representative along with the mayor's water department manager. Just a thought, and I don't think it's mm -hmm. probably too heavy for a you know, decision on, I just want to throw that in the pot. Okay. I think it's a great uh, yeah. recommendation. Okay. I'm gonna be drafting the letter, so I'll see. Because right now the motion is to write to the to the head of the water department and 
not to the mayor. But we can include that in our comments that one. Possibly include the mayor, depending on the right. And possibly, the yeah. Just at the ball cost. Or we could we we could copy them. Depends on who you feel is most important. Yeah, cool. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Okay, so thanks, thanks, Gilda. I, you know, I think you mentioned this in one of the earlier meetings, and it's just it's hard to pinpoint with the pin which one we should be clicking. Yeah, all pointing because there's, I know, mm -hmm. I've I've gone down that, you know, justification issue. But but we gotta have, we have to start somewhere. So I guess it's we don't worry about that. I think sending the letter will show that we're paying attention and we're getting engaged in this issue actively. So yeah. the starting point, just like the other letter. Okay. Susan, you want to comment on the motion or you have something I have broader? Something to present on the water. Okay. As part of the motion to send to... Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. So my name is Sue Aronson. I have created Kona Ridge Tarif Institute. I have been talking with the mayor and the planning department and civil defense, public works, about one particular problem we have in Kona, and that's the Keoku floodway. Um, just recently, I talked to a Sendo Kern last Thursday at the West Hawaii Association of Realtors meeting. He said, we are interested in acquiring Richard Wheelock's 120 acres, which is in the floodway. Zendo had given tentative approval for a three lot subdivision. And um, they're now looking, I've been emailing them constantly outside of the CDP, just on my own. And I am asking for the CDP to create a committee or task force that I can be on with regards to water, fresh water um, use, um, I have been talking with Ulupono Initiative, who will help write a grant, and Hawaii Community Foundation. You know, I tried to write a grant with them, but until the county steps forward to request the grant, so then I am now talking with Bethany Morrison with Oscar. And so they all agreed during the last mayor sustainability summit two weeks ago, they were, they're all on board, but none of them have emailed me or responded to me. So I would like somehow to designate it as a point person to talk to people about the water reuse plan and floodway mitigation. So I have I have this, I'll just leave it up here and um you can take a look at it when you get a chance. But we we have major problems in Kona and it affects our community development plan. I've been talking with parks and recreation I have information, but I have been doing a lot just on my own, and I don't know how to present it to the current CDP. So I'm hoping for some sort of authority to communicate more with Charlie and the other members. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. <clears throat> Anyone else want to comment? No. Okay, so we have a motion on the floor. So all in favor of. Uh, Myself writing a letter to the head of the water department uh, to request uh, that they do a presentation to us on the current situation. Water supply. Uh, all in favor, indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Okay, hearing none. Okay, so we've got two letters that need to be drafted. Charlie, regarding the Pigs issue on mm -hmm. water. I, again, my interest is public education. And so I think, in, not through this letter, but more to what Kayla was talking about, I think I think the public is largely ignorant about these issues. And they're very important issues in terms of even imagining, you know, urban planning for Kona in terms of water use. And I think a public presentation outside of this room, something where it's promoted and advertised and you're trying to get a large amount of people and where the mayor and maybe somebody from the governor's office have to come and, you know, talk to the community about these issues and what the opportunities and limitations are and, you know, the potential um, 
challenges in terms of developing our urban corridor regarding water. And I think the public needs to be engaged in this. I don't think we can just you know, keep talking to ourselves in this room. I think that, so in terms of the water issue, I'd be interested at some stage, not immediately, but working on a larger public meeting where we're trying to get a lot of exposure and advertise it and host it as a, for the community to educate the public on these issues. A, use, yeah, like, a town meeting, a town hall meeting uh, on Kona's water. <laughs> So that's something I mean, even that, that actually meeting that happened recently on the septic, so what are the, the conversions for the, I mean, that got a lot of public interest, and that was very specific, mandatory conversions of cesspools, so that, but this is a much more a broader issue and very important, and I don't think the community has a clue, and I think it's part of our responsibility not only to work with the planning department and other departments about CDP implementation, but we're also the ambassadors to the community. And we need to work on things like town hall meetings to bring the community in so that they have opportunity to know what's going on or what's not going on. So at some point, if people are ready, I'll be willing to work on helping organize something like that. I don't know if it's appropriate, but um... It, along that line, exactly. We're, there's some USGS money we're going to apply for, and, and part of it is to have community outreach to do exactly what you said. So, <laughs> I'll be in touch. And maybe, and, and they told us our grant would be stronger if we had community Partners. outreach. Yes. yes. So, I'll, I'll help. I'll help. <laughs> yeah. So, so Miriam. Um. Is, is the action committee, are we able to, I, I know this is a public meeting, but you know, have a public meeting, an AC meeting, a regular AC meeting, where we can. Um, like a notarize it a little more so that we can get the general public to come and talk on one specific subject, the water. Uh, the water issue. That was, was what that... we were talking about, about formation of a pigs to host a town hall meeting. That was what that was about. Yeah, well, and we don't... yeah, so I think we still, we're not giving up on the pig, but no, I think no, we're I... going to do something if we can. You're going to do something... this letter first. Well, that's to the water department, but we still want to do an outreach somehow. And I'm just wondering if the AC is not a mechanism where we can have a town hall meeting. Yeah, that's basically kind of how we did the kind of open space can agendize it all the ac members can be present um even if we're just doing presentations like technically that's that's okay and whether we do it via the pig or we just do it with the whole ac those are both options also um us having our meetings um over here in this conference room like this venue can change um we're not qu quite so equipped for like fully outdoor meetings um but but there's definitely, we have a pretty wide spectrum of how we could be hosting our regular, even our regular meetings. Um, and if we want it to align with us, another event that's happening, you know, or, you know, kind of to, our, to kind of be more in tune with what's happening in the public. Like there's, there's a lot of, there's a lot of room there to figure out something that's a little bit more inviting to the general public. Charlie, the advantage of a, forming a pig to host a town hall meeting is that three or four of us can work on the sidelines and organize it. Because something like that logistically is going to take a lot of work. We can't do it just at formal AC meetings to, in terms of contacting people and inviting people and setting up venues and printing advertising or whatever needs to be done. You know, that's a pig sort of a tool, you know, where three or four of us would be working on the sidelines to organize an event. You can't just do that in this meeting month after okay, month. Okay, so you're proposing to create a pig on the water. In order spot. to host something like that. And so a number of us would be working on that project. Now, this might be something to bring up to Corp Council, but like another thing to look into could be that if you guys are purely creating a pig just 
to handle the logistics of creating a meeting, um, then maybe there's room in there that that's, that's appropriate, just like how we can coordinate with you guys about, um, and you guys can discuss matters that are just not on the agenda item. Um, so if it's just about like coordinating speakers, like maybe that's a, something that would be allowable without the necessity of the pig. Um, not that I have a preference in either version, but now then if we're having the pig host this meeting, uh, then the other question is this public me this this larger scale public meeting. Um, what the other AC members that are not in the pig attend, and I believe the answer is no. But then the pig would report back to the AC as a whole on what happened, and then that therefore going through the the pig steps, right? They do that report back. The committee discusses it or here's the report and then no decision making and like that so both options i'm just trying to map out both options for everybody so so if we had a town hall who would you who would you invite who who, who, you, who would you think well i think that's question? what i mean we'd have to form a pig and sit down and have some coffee and talk about it <laughs> i don't know right now i think it needs to be thought about and considered like community development Corporation and also a foundation and also the initiative. They both agree to us. Okay, well, um, and then I think what we're leading up to is a discussion to form a pig. If people want to take that on to host a town hall meeting, to I think it should be a credible event. You want to hear from the water department first and then go from that? Yeah, we'll probably. That's sort of what I was imagining. Yeah. No, I'm just. Do this big that we're meeting. Yeah. I would prefer that. what I thought. I would prefer the whole committee be present when we do that, not just the pig. But the pig is only a logistical sort of apparatus. To hold a town hall meeting. To plan it. As an AC meeting. Two different things, right? To plan versus hold. Is that what you're, I think you're talking about two different things. Well, the pig would be so that more than two of us could plan it. It would be the planning group. Right. Yeah. But the right. AC could still be. They available. could still post it up. They hold, it could be agendized as an AC meeting once you're right. ready to okay. do it. That's, if that's what people prefer. Yeah. So you want to motion that because we can create it today. I mean, this is. Do you want to create, are you ready to, to commit yourself to this? Oh, absolutely. Okay, I mean, okay. Because this is, this is <laughs> the thing that you've yeah. been challenged uh, talking about from the beginning. So I, I, you're sort of the lead on this issue. I'm, um, I'm definitely willing to help. And um, yeah. so I'm not so, going to take the lead on it. Um, okay. So in addition to the water department, I'm like the public has raised three different groups to potentially weigh in. Do we want to expand some presentations in the next meeting? Like letters to, to those? For the next meeting? Yeah. Can we finish this particular topic first? Then Okay, I thought it was related, yes. Yeah. Well, did he want to make a motion to seek to form a pig for a, to host? It? Okay. So what we want to do, I think, is is on the water issue itself. Mm -hmm. Try and have a larger meeting, more like a town hall, yeah. on that as a specific issue. Mm -hmm. The AC, on the other hand, is more is not just interested in the specific. I think we're interested in how that relates to all the other areas when the in the the CDP, and I think. That's what you're talking about is bringing in more people uh, at, um, to the meeting to to talk about issues related to the water department or related to water. Yeah, I mean, I was just the Ulupono Institute. I don't know these organizations, yeah. but and then the mayor, there, there, there are three. Yeah, the mayor, um, I'm going to try and include in the water department if you can. Ulupono is a nonprofit, yeah, for. Uh, Hawaii, and they're doing, Hawaii. yeah, yeah, but they do a lot of things besides water. Uh huh. Yeah, and so on the on the water, they would have they would have they're not a decision making authority mm -hmm. uh, as it you know like the water department mm -hmm. is, but they could provide 
it could provide comment. The mayor has to, has to force, or have to right, right, force the Department of Water right. Supply to create rainwater right. reuse. So, so I think what we would do is if we if we get the water department head to talk or speak that we could also invite someone from one of the other organizations to make sure they attend the meeting and not necessarily be contribute but yeah not necessarily be on the agenda mm -hmm. you to testify <clears throat> to come in Charlie, just every time i talk to the department of water supply this is it's not our place to do all that planning, so they keep fighting it. We have to get the mayor to yeah. get the private water to yeah. start. Right. And maybe that's the reply we're going to get from the water. But, but I'll, 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 again, I'll try and work that in to the because I met with the mayor on water already. I know what he's thinking. Okay. So we have a motion. What's the, what's uh, the we, motion? I think we're going to move to create a pig to to uh, work on the logistics for holding a, uh, a public meeting, a town AC meeting that would invite the entire public um, on the issue of water. I'll second it. Does that sound right? Yeah. I mean, we could even get up to come to the next meeting with the water supply, but that, yeah, okay. So I move. Mm -hmm. And we have a second. Is there discussion on that? I yeah. more discussion. I know. Okay. What do I? What do we have? Two. Okay. John. And then, then other then as many as now. four okay. of us can work on a pig is yeah. my understanding. So right. it, okay. It, it, Before we get who's who, how many people can we have on the pig? Uh, less than quorum, so that would be five. Two to four. Good point. Okay, who else wants to be involved at this point? Yeah, so it's you and Nancy right now? Yeah. Yeah, I can go too. It's, it's something I want to talk about too. Okay, so four of us. So All four right. of us will work on the pig to start planning for a town hall water meeting. Mm -hmm. And and the next meeting is going to be pretty important. And that's the, helping and us. And then of, the other motion is to get to get the yeah. letter out. And, but the letter is separate. Then yes. We'll to the right. All right. Okay. So we move we moved and seconded to have the pig create the pig for the for the purpose of the implement uh, plan, implementation planning for the for the larger meeting. Do we have to define that meeting at this point, Miriam? No. No. Okay. So do we have to say who the uh, participants are? Yes. Okay. So there'll be myself, John, Nancy, and Heather. Okay. That's that's the limit of what we can have. Okay. And the yeah. and the understanding is this can go on. It doesn't have a time limit. It doesn't have to be resolved next right. meeting. Go on. And no time limit. Right. No time limit. So. Right. No time limit. Don't yeah. have to under a lot of pressure to perform. Okay. But we also can't report. The, we also can't report the next meeting. No. 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 We won't report it. Keola, you had some testimony you wanted yes. to do. I'm sorry, I wasn't trying to overlook you, but that's okay. Yeah. So, um, just to make sure I got it right. Sit here. Is that right? Yeah. We want. We want to just call it. Yeah. I don't want to trip over. Yeah. Uh, Yes, me think you get the, we get the, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yes. yeah. Oh, yeah, you got oh, microphones this. everywhere. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, I want to speak as to the implementation priorities um, in general. Uh, first, I'd like to make a retro comment, very short, on the Calipay Regional Park. And that is to look for uh, answers that will be what I think you need, the committee needs to know is. Is this administration committed to beginning to develop this regional park one way or the other? And uh, how urgently? We know there's water issues. We know there's the sewer plant upgrades. We And you'll be getting more data on that. But other than being deferred because there's this problem and that problem, 
is this administration committed to overcoming those problems in X years? And, are, and to do the planning, is there a reason why preliminary site plan is other, are there elements of that re regional park that can be undertaken now on the assumption that the wastewater plant will be upgraded so that R1 water will be available, for example, and that there will be other water sources, what are, whatever the roadblocks are, can some of the development plans, the design for the soccer fields, the ball fields, the play fields, can some of this actually be done if all we're waiting for is water? Or what are the elements that prevent design and CIP planning for the internal roads, the landscaping, and so on? How much can be done while we wait for water and sewer to be done over the next several years? That's what at least I would be interested in hearing from this administration. And I'm not saying critically that they don't want to do it. It's just that we, if the committee doesn't know that they are and how they plan to go about it, then you really don't know anything other than there's problems. And that's not good enough, in my view, is to be told there's problems. Can you do anything besides wait for those problems to be solved? And we're working on those problems. We don't know when, but what else can we do? Are we so committed that we can plan for the park and design it and bring the public in for further detailed charrettes beyond what was done five, 10 years ago when they went through that? So we can engage and keep momentum going. And if that needs to be done for the Makaeo Park, all day improvements at the same time, great, because there are two different parks and two different purposes. And if this administration feels that Honestly, folks, we think Calakay Regional Park has to, for reasons one, two, three, has to be deferred for 10 years. We want to put five, 10 million into the district park, which is what Makaeo is, and do ABC. If that's what it is, tell us. Otherwise, we're, we're being treated like children without any answers. There's no food. We don't know when we can feed you next. That just doesn't work. Gee, this has been going on quite a few years. Yes, I know. And that's why I'm being so strident about this, because I see this answer. What I wanted to talk about mainly was to focus on, as an implementation priority, development of shifting development priorities as to one particular road. Last uh, two years ago, I was looking at my notes. I passed, uh, I had made testimony on implementation priorities. If you pass this around, please, for, uh, for this. Kona area, and I made rationale that water, sewer, and roads were the priority, and that we should focus it on in this particular plan here that I've excerpted from the CDP. Focus it on this hatched area that's about a mile and a half radius from the center of Kailua. Uh, that will include, oh, maybe uh, five square miles, something like that, to focus all of our county supported infrastructure and development, to focus it on facilitating intensive, friendly, desirable development in this area instead of the CDP's 200-year plan of 14 nodes stretched between Keho and Palamanui above the airport. That there's not enough population. I pointed out at less than 1,000 permitted residential dwelling units per year in this entire county between 2007 and 2020 or 19. It was, uh, 13 years and 12,000 units for the entire county, residential units. We know there are many illegal units, but as far as people pulling permits to create regional center, TODs, transit-oriented developments, transit uh, neighborhood developments, these sort of things, there's not enough density. Kona's share of that 900 legal units is probably no more than a third of North Kona's. And you can't build a TOD or TND out of 300 units over 14 linear miles with half a dozen or more TODs with one developer saying like Palamanui, we want to do it. TSA by Coloco Industrial saying, we want to do it. And everyone's saying they want to do it, but no one's doing it. And so nothing is happening because the economies of scale just aren't there. So I suggested concentrating it. That was my testimony two years ago on May 22nd, I was looking at my notes. What I have in, uh, to elaborate on from that within this same idea is specifically the notion of the county's notion of extending the Anakeo Kaloli Highway 
beyond its terminus right now at Hinalani. You could pass these around, please. I've made some notes on a, on a map here. Um, instead of that, my, my notion, I want to suggest to this committee is that you should ask the county to stop wherever they are on that design program and to icebox it. And instead, focus on a different, much higher value connector road in this area. And that is, and this map that I'm passing around, the green line. And that is an extension. And I've mentioned this maybe eight or 10 years ago when I wore a different hat in, a, in servicing the action committee as a planning department employee, it was an option. This road segment would extend from Kalakaa Street, where the elementary and intermediate schools are, over a cross slope to Hinalani, where the new affordable housing is under construction and the sewer line is running up to. Keep running north and tie into Holo Holo, halfway down through uh, Kona Acres and Palisades, run into Kona Coast View, and service entirely that entire region, sub-region, Kalawa. Those people that have school children to pick up or to take back would not have to go up to Palani. And if you've been on Palani, as I have going fortunately the other direction, at 7, 7.30 in the morning, where the traffic is stopped from Matsuyama store to somewhere down below the Holuoloa 180 junction, stop. And where are those people going? A lot of them, not all of them, are going to school enough to slow things down. If you have a road, that runs right from where the middle of these people, where they live, to go right into the schools. We're taking a lot of traffic off of Polani and increasing capacity. The colors are a little limited, but the darker red shading shows, the, the purplish ones show existing roads that are of value. Dark red links are ones that if they could, if this road goes across, the green line is built. Those two short red sections will connect to the purple sections and make an incredible grid that exists nowhere else in West Hawaii, nowhere else of distances within a half mile or a mile at the most of major collector, if not arterial streets that can serve everyone. In the TND or TOD concept, the regional park just outside of the circle, the uh, area I've drawn is what the in the lang in the lingo of the American continent planners that sold us this concept. Um, it would be special districts. You've got the regional park right outside of the regional center development. You got a police station. You got the civic center right here. You've got the uh, West Big Island Medical Community um, Medical Center right up on the highway. The high school. All these are in that lingo of special districts right around that center. Meanwhile, we would have a grid of these roads running through it. There is no greater opportunity in West Hawaii to create a place where there could be an infill supported by county and private funding, community facilities, districts, and the otherwise, to fill this area in with affordable housing. The luxury people can go somewhere else. But the people who need houses, this would provide the infrastructure. The sewer district is right below. Water, wells, everything would serve here. So my, my reason for advocating this one road is by doing that, that will pull in the other segments to be done. Calicate Parkway is a, is a state right of way currently. The original plan was to Copalani, but there's too much uh, slope problems for them to have done it. They could go this far up to do it. We can, with this road done, we can immediately relieve Polani, and we can also open up these areas to create the, the infrastructural foundation from a road, traffic, circulation, shuttles, bicycling across from these residential areas to the school district. It could all be done with this one road and draw in the rest of it, create the meat of the one TOD that Kona could feasibly accomplish at the rate of three to 500 dwelling units a year, if, mo if even a third of those, a couple hundred are pulled to infilling these areas. Yeah, yeah well, if I can stop you there. I'm done. So, uh, okay, that's, well, that's okay. The timing. Um, you said you presented this to me before. Uh, you know, I don't recall it, but that doesn't mean it didn't happen. What was planning's response? Why is the county not 
doing so. There was no, I just presented it to you folks. I didn't okay. ask anybody. Okay. I was just wondering if we, you know, if we do push it upstairs, whether there's, you know, some prevailing thought that's in planning or in the department as to why they're developing the way they do the roadway. The, and Ani is going to go all the way to uh, Palisades. Well, it's momentum, probably. My right, speculation, right. Mayor Kinoy, bless his heart, what a right. wonderful mayor he was. And he took advantage right. of federal money to get what was done during that right. session. Wonderful. So it's naturally the notion, and the CDP called for it to go out to university. Right. And Palamanui, as a private developer, was proposing this grand scheme. So there was thinking there was going to be this huge development, the university centers, the yeah. all the stuff yeah. was going to happen. But as those dreams evaporated, because they really weren't real, none of these TODs, every, even Little Kalani Trust, pulled back. And they've scaled back now, coming up with this new simpler proposal. These things are just not financeable by the big boys. Yeah. So it's there's no longer the motivation. But when we discuss this, when the action committee discussed this eight to 10 years ago, when as a planning department employee, I pointed out that this green road alignment, at least to Hinalani to Kalakau, there was a memorandum of agreement between the landowners and public works to study that right of way corridor and suggested that that might be a priority. The action committee at that time said in its recommendations to the county, consider that, but proceed with the Anakeo Kalali. Right. And what I'm saying now is time's up and we don't have money and time. We need to bag that. It's not going to serve people other than a bypass for common money. Yeah, but the so so my recollection is I remember I remember that as being a priority when I was up there. When it was, and it was it was under the guise of CIP. And Ani had already gotten the funding for it. Yes. And that's that's so it was we're taking funding away from one project yes. to support another project. Okay, yes. so I just want to be clear a, on a that. A hard decision and it's going to create a lot uh, of shock. But when it comes yeah. down to where do we put time 30 million, what's yeah. going to serve the people that live here? No, I, I still think it makes sense. But, you know, again, I'm trying to understand what, what, uh, we aren't going to get both. what the discussion is going to be centered around if, because I think what we're, we're doing is not just making a suggestion on, Good plan. What might be good planning? It's the it's the capital improvement program priorities and what have you. Know. Priorities. Yeah, and I don't think we've even dealt into and those yet. If we can, if it comes down to whether or not the action committee believes in the idea of a regional center development, concentrating our planning, our infrastructure, sewer line extensions, general obligation bonds, things we do with developers, community facility districts, to focus ninety percent. Other than infill parks and supports in our rural areas that we have to continue uh -huh. to do and to improve, whether it's Yano Hall or something south, or, or yes, we have to take care of the district. But if we focus our, what we, I think we need is a rather than update the old, theoretically overdue update of the regional plan. I'm sorry, the CDP uh, adopted what seven, 18 years ago, 30, whatever long time. 2008. 2008, rather than go through the whole reinventing, I would like to suggest that there be a plan done for a regional center development on these bases that we concentrate and that we commission the detailed plan for exactly how do we extend these road sections in which order? How does the sewer line tie in and with the Calicating Park update, or not update, development, the regional park? a picture to really put this in and in phases, which phase would come first over 10 or 20 years. Then we would have a plan. We'd say, yes, the 200, all the bubbles all along the coast of TODs, if and when we can get to it, but this is our priority. So we have affordable housing. Right. Yeah, so it's, is it your opinion then that the TODs are not um, high on the planning curve and you know high in the curve in terms of planning priorities? Oh, well, what I is there to the plan? Well, well, I uh, think that I'll put it another way on on the county's plan to execute the plan. I think they're waiting for landowners to make proposals to do right. POE, so it's still, it's still and none can afford to, right. to do it. Right. Okay. Even Little Kalani Trust, when twenty on nineteen, they proposed a reach a project district to do that and to extend Kuakini on up by the wastewater treatment plant to come on all these. One, mostly wonderful things, but based on this 
mainland concept of how TODs work. And that doesn't work, at least in Hawaii and our population level. So they bailed it. They yeah. pulled it back. And right. now they're proposing a very right. small micro version of it. Right. And that's one of the uh, that's one of the founding principles of the, the plan uh, is TODs. And and rather than to denigrate or put down that concept. It's in the plan, and it's my opinion that it's not feasible. It's proven now. It's not that it shouldn't be. It'd be wonderful, but it's just it's proven the private market won't finance it, build it. We don't have the population growth rate to populate one. Waikoloa has a little less than ten thousand people in it, and even though it's an automobile-driven community, and twenty miles from anywhere else, so you've got a good study example. How much services do they have? For 10,000 people and what, 3,000 dwelling units. And if you got three, how long is it going to take to do 3,000 dwelling units for one, for another TOD? And that still doesn't create the TOD. There's still no transit system to get them other than a bus once or twice a day, maybe. That doesn't work. Keaho, it serves about 6,000 people, including the canoe paddlers, the park goers, and so on. They've got 170,000 square foot shopping center, which is great, but it's not what... Even if people walk, there isn't all the things they need to walk. And we don't have a bus service for all those people. So we need a lot more than 10,000. And we don't have the population growth to do it. So this is why focusing on one place, we can be, and where the roads are 90% there, just a couple of lakes, we get chance. Well, let's, we can test that. We get chance. Yeah. I, well, I was just wondering, this, you haven't proposed this to the planning department yet. So you're kind of wondering if we can be advocated. I don't think it's my play or a citizen's place to go to the planning department and say, hey, go do this. Yeah, but I, I think the action committee who wants to implement this wonderful plan, long range plan, I think this is the body that needs to, it has to wait. They have asked you guys to, the county has asked you by creating your body to make these kind of recommendations and to provide pressure. Not for me, yeah. Mr. Joe Blow we'll just, thinks he knows it all to come up there and say, hey, take my yeah. ideas. I was just curious. So it's only gone here. Only before. to you folks. And, you know? and the red lines, this is just, those would also need to be roads. The bright red lines. The bright red are just, are the, the links which would extend to the green road that I've suggested, this cross slope road. Just by building those two sections, Manavalea, which already goes down to Anakeo Kaloli, extended down to Kona Commons, the Makala Boulevard, and boom, what have you done for this whole area? You've got a straight shot from Kalakaha all the way into the new mixed commercial industrial and Kalakai Parkway, which we sit right next to here. Just take that up another half mile to Anakeo Kaloli, and boom, you've got another road down to the, the harbor, to parks, to the airport, all those areas and bypasses. Just those two links would provide, make this whole area pop. Did you apply any comments to the general plan update? Um, that's a, that's another, I, I don't want to go there. I'm not ready to comment <laughs> on that. Um, I, I think the focus, 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 focus is what I say to myself as far as how do we get off the dime where everyone says, well, we got to do water, we got to do sewer, and we don't have enough money. We got all these emergencies on the east side. We don't know what we're going to do and when we're going to get to it, but yes, we're going to try. That we're hearing this constantly. We don't have parking in Kailua Village. There's no plan to, to address that. There are so many issues here that they're not touching. Focus, focus, focus. And so I'm just trying to, if we did an RCD for this area, then, as a sidebar issue, we could begin to talk about parking for Kailua Village because all these roads lead to and from someplace. But uh, the general plan is, uh, I, I don't think this is the right time to speak to that. We have a big, a, a lot to fill in. We have an empty plate right now in Conan. And I'd like to suggest that we get at least a scoop of mashed potatoes. Any questions for Kilo? Thank you for your presentation. Thank you. And your passion. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks for allowing me. So yeah. okay, so we're still on the agenda item four three. It's do we have any more discussion on 
implementation priorities. I, I don't know. I, I think it seems like we've got a lot on our plate. <laughs> I, I, I'm kind of thinking that myself. So, so are there any other comments or discussion what, for this testimony? What do we do? Like, do we just like how do we decide what we're going to do? We can decide. Just who's going to testimony? Yeah. Yeah. But I'm I'm just saying in the future because I'm new. Like how. Do we agendize it for the next meeting as a discussion? Do we, we want to. So the next item is to discuss the agenda for the next item for the next meeting so we, we can decide whether we should be putting this on or not. Um, yeah. So we, we can decide, we can discuss it now too, whether that's an implementation we want to do. It's totally optional. Yeah. 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 People come to talk about whatever and they it, want. That doesn't mean we have to do anything about for it. For sure, but how, like we, we would need to talk about, do we want to take that on or not? Like well, we for anything, on right? What? We, we don't amend this document. I'm not saying that, but if someone comes and gives testimony, we, it, I feel like we have like a duty and uh, to talk about it and say, is this something we want to try to well, move can, forward or not. I would, you can raise that if you want. It's not There's not a protocol for public testimony to act on it one way or another, but if a mm -hmm. member gets inspired to want mm -hmm. to, you can, mm -hmm. but there isn't a process. Uh -huh. I, I think the right way to do it is to raise you to, to send it out to our channel, which is the planning department. Mm -hmm. Because that's that's where we're housed, mm -hmm. and this is probably a planning issue. For sure. Yeah, and this is why I kind of asked them what kind of pushback mm -hmm. we might be getting. Because yeah. years ago, this wasn't a specific subject, but it was where the capital was going to be spent was basically whether they were projecting the future mm -hmm. uh, development to be, which is mm -hmm. on a connecting to uh, to uh, planning in Ania. Yeah. yeah, and what that was going to do was just open up another lane other than mm -hmm. Pawnee Road and uh, and uh, Queen K. Mm -hmm. so, so, and this was another option on mm -hmm. but they didn't have any funds for it. Uh -huh. So we would have to. This is me. <laughs> this is me thinking process now. You would you'd have to go up to the planning. Mm -hmm. They would have to plan it out. Then we'd have to go get capital for it. Mm -hmm. as much sense as it makes uh-huh so and this is something like you know definitively this is not well, on the radar of planning no i'm well, i don't know that until yeah. you ask him mm -hmm. yeah i don't know that mm -hmm. that's why i asked Hale if he had presented the plan yeah. did yeah. so we can write a letter mm -hmm. Since we're in a letter writing mode today, I don't even know whether it's a good idea or necessarily. I don't feel equipped to make that I, yeah, determination. We well why don't we bring it up at another Why meeting. don't we? Yeah. So in the next item, we're going to talk about the agenda for the next meeting. So I still have yeah. one other thing on this uh, board, too, though. Oh, okay. okay. I'm sorry. Yeah. In, what's the, go ahead. It's mostly a question. So, I mean, the stuff that I was interested in, I think Heather and I are really pursuing with the park stuff. I have two kind of specific questions for planning. Uh, well, one related to the park stuff, which is the encourage adopt a park and adopt a streak civic participation. Um, I see online that Honolulu and Hawaii counties have that kind of program, but does Hawaii County have a program for adopt a park? Do you know, Mary? No. Oh, like if I have. No, I'm. You heard the question? Yeah, I saw that. Yeah, there's a. There's a. I'm looking at public uh, PUB 7.2 B encourage adopt a park and adopt a street civic participation. I see a lot of adopt a street civic participation in the county, like in Hawaii County. In Honolulu and Kauai, I see they have like online ways to adopt a park, but we don't have that here. Is that true? Or is there an adopt a park program? And it's just not. At I, a... I have no idea, but I can look into that. Um, yeah. The I, I met someone at this Calgate A high school curriculum showcase, they were interested in helping out with a park. This was in Waikoloa, though. And they had expressed the inability to be able to participate in that. And I think maybe some adopt a, some, some formal adopt a park program to help interface the two. So our nonprofit organization has a memorandum of understanding with the town people. Yeah, where we co-manage oh, kind of each park. Oh, okay. the county park. And um, because this can't be there, we we uh, Take care of all the camping 
on reservations, make sure people get there, check them in, and uh, you know, monitor for safety and what have you. And we do a lot of outreach through that with the tourists that come. So it's a good idea and it's there. Uh, you know, yeah, how did we you had do a that? Not profit. Not profit, okay. Yeah, we had a we had a little profit. Okay, okay. Yeah, so I wonder if there's a way we could I mean, that's great. And that's exactly what I was thinking about, yeah. right? Because the, the parks department obviously needs help. And yeah. there are people willing to help out. Yeah, and uh, Kalu Beach Park, Sydney Punya Holy, she's doing the same thing. Uh, Kohai Nike mm -hmm. has, uh, of course, the resort helps to fund that, but it's a common point. Okay. So would there be a, is it, would it be useful to examine whether the county program, as far as a fund adopt a park program, would that be something worth looking into, or do you think it's being taken care of on a case by case basis already? You know, I'd be interested to listen to the the woman who was here last time that she had the nonprofit. Um, and oh yeah. yeah, yeah, right. That she had some experience with trying to get to some of the soccer and sports stuff, and she was she already had a nonprofit. Mm -hmm. I don't know that. Yeah. I don't know how far she, she you know, she pursued that with the county, but I mean, she was pretty passionate about getting more mm -hmm. access to more parks. Mm -hmm. But, but to address your point, there are local communities like Waikoloa, the neighborhood in Waikoloa, they individuals there have helped the different parks in the, in those red in those areas to address you know their picnic tables or their place structures, they've upgraded that internally, but outside the, you know, public funding. So it's it's just a little community event that they put together within within the within the impact of that neighborhood itself. The kid they know that the kids use the playground. How can we fix it up? It's the it's that internal So there all these different entities are doing it without a formal County formal, they, process. Let, they let the parks service know, but they've they've addressed it internally. I I was part of that and mm -hmm. uh, helped helping mm -hmm. supporting that. Um, I think it was a year ago we built some new co some new picnic tables mm -hmm. up over the parks and one of the um, playgrounds in like low. Was that uh, part of the H O H O A, or did it, you just do it as individuals? It, they did it individually, but because the the, the park itself was part of the park system. Uh, we still had to alert them. So, so for you guys who have been really involved in it, do you think an adopt a parks program to the county would be something that would be useful or beneficial for I think it would be useful be, just because they're underfunded. Yeah. And that you know, having it having an impact, especially if you're able to get um you know, community resources outside the public going to corporations or going to the different companies in the, in the area and help them help provide it. So I guess that's the only thing that went through my mind that maybe might be useful for take advantage of funding opportunities. Yeah, right. Yeah. About yeah. You know, the, I think the biggest, mm -hmm. uh, in my opinion, I think the biggest impacts that we've had on the community is when the U.S. government said, "Here, use this." Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, we got the highway coming or the connect, mid connector road through, yeah. through that. So, I mean, that was a lot of money that was put yeah. into that, and it was in a hurry too. They got it done quickly. So that might be something you want to include into your letter with the Mike's and Ray. Yeah, maybe with that's something just put in there. And, and, yeah, we'll see what they say. Yeah. About yeah. Yeah. That idea. Yeah. Maybe yeah. that'll be because you don't know who belong to and yeah. get the community behind it. Yeah. Okay, yeah, I think then, it's sort of like a national program because they I think a lot of communities have them. So yeah, like I said, like Honolulu County and yeah. Hawaii, I think both we'll have that's easily online. I just searched yeah. Hawaii a dog mm -hmm. park and I found most of them. Yeah. Um and then I had another topic that was completely unrelated to parks, but it was just one of these other things in here that I wanted to ask mm -hmm. about. I'm looking at CR 1.1C. So it's on a continuing basis identified by GPS coordinates, all cultural resource sites recommended for preservation by SHPD and CRC and incorporated to the county's GIS database. So is that, and I think the most of this is a question for planning. Is that like, um, is that supposed to go on the public facing GIS website that you find just off of Google? 
I think I'm muted. Sorry about that. Can you give me the policy number again that you? Yeah, it's CR dash one point one C. Because I was looking at the county's GIS website and did not find this on there. Now there's a lot of like drop down menus that maybe I didn't find it. Um, but I, so I was wondering where that was. If that's moved forward or. You know, I know like Kibuka, which is ran by OHA, has a lot of this stuff on there, on their website. But I was wondering if there, if this had moved forward in the county, if there's some kind of holdup. And I know Kibuka itself doesn't have all of the SHPD sites on it, because there's a couple that are right next to where I live that aren't on. So I was curious about the status of that specific policy. Yeah. Or B? Or are you C? Yeah. Sorry. The and could you identify by GPS but all cultural resources? Um as a general okay, so just off the top of my head, just reading this policy on a continuing basis, identify by GPS coordinates all cultural resources sites recommended for pre preservation by shifting and CRC and incorporate into the county's GIS database. Um that's what we're talking about, right? Yeah, and are these just like the SHPD sites, like the historical sites that they identify? Is that what they mean by this? Also? So in in general, um, my understanding, it's common practice um, that these sites actually aren't distributed publicly. This is, you know, just to help with that preservation. Um, they, I believe... Um, I'm not too sure what GIS layers we have internally, um, I can find out within planning. Um, but I, I would I, say that we are don't have the most comprehensive data layers. I, I, I feel like it's safe to say that a lot of this is held by Shifty and, and other entities. Um, yeah. Yeah, so I guess that was the kind of question maybe we could follow up about it later. It's about is this supposed to be uh, public facing and if it's if it's not I guess I'm just trying to figure out what the point of that policy is and if it's like where we are at with it um I would think I would assume that a a benefit of having uh, these type of coordinates incorporated into the county's GIS would be for um, internal processing um, when we're doing our our reports and background checks on on different permits and applications um yeah that's kind of where that is. I mean, general, more like commonly known historical like locations, I believe there are layers for that. Um, I don't know if planning has those um, showing publicly, um, but in general, there there is that caution to not actually show where a lot of these sites are to protect them. Okay, so this would be more for like, if someone wants to, construct something or something needs to be, you know, or permit something that this would be an internal web, an internal database that you guys have. That we would check against. I, I mean, at the end, at the same time, there's always the other safety net that these, those applications are, are also sent over to these other entities for review. Okay. okay. Yeah. So I guess I wouldn't really know, or we wouldn't really know if on a continuing basis, this is being updated unless just happening. You all, because I can't see that database. I guess I can. I can double check with our GIS team um, what the process is on that, and I'm I'm sure they would gladly even come and talk to you guys about it. Um, but yeah, okay. I think that would be a, a good something to that e easily to to get back to you guys on. If you okay. Let me go and talk back to planning. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, bye. Thank you. Any yeah. any other discussion? Yeah, Go ahead. I, I mean, because it's our act, our business item is discussion of priorities and community outreach. Can we talk about that presentation that was just given and see if we want to raise it to planning now versus wait, agendize it? Because it is essentially something that potentially could be a priority. 
I think we can because we left it we left it for that just because he presented it and I don't think we would exclude it because we you know it wasn't specifically on the agenda item but it's I think we could incorporate it as part of the priorities I'm not sure how that melds in with the, with the development plan my own but, feeling is that it's yeah. what he's suggesting is way beyond the scope of us mm -hmm. our role I mean I I wouldn't feel comfortable even passing judgment on something like that without to me, that's a public input, public engagement, mm -hmm. sort of a change in course. I mean, it's a major change in planning perspective for the urban core that he's presenting. And I'm I'm not equipped to make okay. a value judgment on it. It's like an amendment to this document, you know. And I, and, I, and, like and I think that different. that that he said, well, it's amendment to this document is um would be too big of a deal, but it's a I don't necessarily object to the general concept, but I don't think it's within our scope. So when I well, ask, that's my opinion. yeah, 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 no, um, I think this is where because I'm a new member, it, it would be hard for me to to know when people give testimony and we just drop it and don't follow up. So this is, you know, maybe I'm being belaboring the point, but to me, it seemed like he was proposing an idea. He talked about a lot of different things. Um, but if we kind of so, didn't take into consideration the the TOD comments and if that's applicable or not, he's basically proposing one main road and two other roads to help traffic flow, which is a major community issue. And I asked him also, if I, I forgot you asked him, did he bring this to planning? And he just said, I think that's your role. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't think it is. <laughs> okay, then maybe we could get... Because yeah, there's some specific projects like the Ohokalole Highway and you know other stuff. So it's not like, I don't know if in the CDP there's proposed roads or not. I mean, I know what you're saying, and I kind of yeah. agree that this road would be more useful than the Anike Highway, mm -hmm. but you know, just in, in a vacuum living in that area, but... yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I'd have to think about it. But I mean, do yeah. we don't have the expertise yeah. to make kind of an evaluation like so, that. So just as a question to plan, I'm looking at you, Mariam. Um, for something like this, if we get some community input and I mean, I think it, whether we're making a recommendation or not, I think it is we're not a decision-making body, but we are part of the planning department. So it seems that it would be, um, it would make sense for us to to interface with planning to say, can this be evaluated or, um, I, I'm not sure, I'm asking for guidance because it seems this is related to business item two, priorities and. Yeah, so I think, um... I think if the committee was interested, at least to just be doing their due diligence in terms of research, if that's maybe the question, um, then it could be that that it could just be deferred to having planning or or some other entity come in to give a little bit uh, more perspective on the situation. Maybe that would be of interest. Um, it it is a big a big topic that he brought to the table. Obviously, like even just by hearing his words, the history of, of the conversation and everything like that. So definitely I'm not, I haven't been involved in that conversation at all, but we can, planning could reach out to maybe our transportation planner, planning team and see if they have some um, went out to share about decisions that were made. And even just, I think, I think the first step of what he was proposing is just essentially to conduct a study. Um, and to so then again so then in that situation I would assume that it would be um, maybe your interest to see if if that's worth it or not and so you've heard one opinion and maybe what you want to do is you want to hear other opinions on it um, before um, trying to rally up the AC to to vote on anything um, so if you want I would assume th then we could we could. We could just bundle up your question and forward it over to our transportation planners um, and see what they they can share um, 
that would be a person or it could be you know a, a bunch of other people that are that have definitely touched it you know dpw and you know but, uh, even outside of the county but the transportation planner i'm sorry you're basically saying an inquiry into the transportation planner to look I at think that the potential of a study and what their thoughts are about the viability of that. Yeah, I would assume that would be like the easiest next step um, if that's what we're looking for. If, if so essentially the way I, I view the ACs is um, people can be bringing up, especially at that specific agenda item where you guys talk about proposed new items, right? The public can come and give testimony on things that they think you guys should be talking about. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that you guys have to be talking about that, right? Um, and so, so if we like look at it just in a general sense, he brought up something, um, maybe it piqued some of your guys' interest, maybe it didn't, maybe, you know, um, you just, you're not too sure, you need more research. So it's, you know, then you can kind of go down those steps before even like making it like officially something you guys are looking at. Um, I think that's just kind of the way I, I envision this kind of happening. Most CDPs have, the, I guess they have that discussion in this meeting. They have to have this that type of discussion in this meeting and determine for every thing that we receive testimony on, do we want to pursue it or not? Or because in the past we have kind of just heard things and we haven't discussed if we were going to pursue it or not. And how formally you discuss it is also kind of just up to the committee too, right? Because, um, and and I think a, a an important grounding piece is that where does it live in your Kona CDP, um, yes. and anchoring it to that. Yeah. So maybe even just that point takes some research too before even reaching out to other entities and then making sure you have that founding foundation because that that rationale helps helps um, bring weight to your questions when you take it outside to the other agencies when you're asking for their input or you're requesting things of them that uh, to, to, so. to me he was talking about something that falls in the realm of actually doing a version of a review of a lot of the core principles of the urban planning component you just can't pick little pieces of the urban plan and the kind of CDP and say, oh, that sounds good. I mean, I mean, this is getting to be an old document and the urban plan may need a thorough review, but all these things are sort of interconnected and mm -hmm. and it's a, it was a big thing that he suggested. For, for sure. So it isn't I, something that can just see, oh, that's, yeah. gee, that sounds good, you know. Well, <laughs> all of that is true, but he, there was one thing that, I mean, he's, I mean, yes, we could say, do we need to revise the CDP? But I think that, that if you distill out what he was saying, the one thing was the proposing expansion of these this one road with two links. And like I said, I but, don't, but I think it would need a study. But yeah. it's already yeah. in the CDP. It's already in the plan. Mm -hmm. It's already in the plan. If you look on 416 or 417, it's shown in there as, as, that how the transportation can be expanded. And, but, you know, we, as our, as the seat, as our group, our committee, we kind of have to take what rises to the top, the most, the most urgent things. And we're been dealing with wastewater, we're dealing with water rights, we're, you know, we're taking things that are getting to the head where we need to start addressing it, so. I, I I see, and it it is it is in that, and when they started doing that big connector road, they had the plans to keep, keep the expanding. But you know, Palabanui went away because their that whole development kind of sh shut down. We got the community college in there mm -hmm. as part of Palabanui, but really everything everything uh, Makai and Malka disappeared. So I. I think in terms of agenda item B or two, <laughs> um, does 
I mean, I can take the action to me. I, I don't know his name, but, but it sounds like one knows who he is. Mm -hmm. I can reach out to him and formulate an inquiry to the transportation planner just about if there's a study, is it worth it? But do you, we want me to do that as a group? I think I think the letter, um, which 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 proposes that um, developing Kealakaha, I think it is, yeah, as an alternative to planning at this moment in time, I think would be a fair question to raise. Something that specific it might be a good idea. Right. This is really good. yeah. No, no, <laughs> just, the, I'm talking about the road and the right. two connectors. Right. Okay. And and I think that would be a you know that would be a fair question to ask uh, mm -hmm. at this point. Um, you know all the other layers in there. Um, yeah. Uh, that that Keola mentioned yeah. probably would be of benefit, but that's not what I, you got to keep it simple because I think it's going to come down to money. Mm -hmm. It's going to come down to whether they can put it in a capital improvement program, yeah. and then they're going to have to find money for roads. So, so the the question I think we can ask them is that is that a better alternative to to solving the immediate traffic problem that we have now in this area, and defer ANI, the extension of ANI, because things fell apart there. And what Keola suggesting if you put this road in, then you can concentrate, you can better concentrate your development in there. But uh, beyond that, I, I mean, you know, I'm not so sure. I'm not even sure. I mean, maybe that's part of the study, but it's it. it the, the reason the have... problem is the traffic. That's just... that's right, and that's what the road would, uh -huh. you know, Maybe. ameliorate. Right. So specifically speaking, speaking to that topic, it would be a fair question to ask mm -hmm. because we're all concerned about okay. tra transportation. So the bigger impact on the planning and all yeah. of that. That's that's for the department. So can I make a motion for myself to put an inquiry into the transportation planner just about extending this road and the two links? Oh. You would need to make a motion to Heather Stewart and herself. I think we do if I'm doing it as a CDP. No, she wants, she wants, if you do it as a private citizen, of course. No, but if I'm you not do it as an action commission. Right. right. I'm right. saying then, I'd put an inquiry on behalf of the kind of CDP. Right. Right. Uh, right. Um, I don't have any objections, but I don't have a feeling about it either, one way or another. But, um, if, if you're willing to draft it, I'll go ahead and sign it up. Actually, let me see. Then I think it just it's more proper, you know, rather than each member. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I'm not trying to have my signature on everything. Yeah, I think that that's that, just you know, yeah, yeah, pro forma. Oh, okay. If you mm -hmm. like, you want to write one. So just... I I would like to meet with him and. and you, uh, yeah, yeah. Well, I, again. Uh, yeah, I think it's a good can an individual meet person meet as a as a yeah. committee member officially, um, just the representing the committee? Or if you guys vote on on allowing her to have that to to use that, then yes. Okay. His name Kayla Child. He he used to be a council member. Yeah. Yeah. You can friend them on Facebook and get a hold of them. Yeah, he was actually our in charge of this committee at one time when I signed on. Mm -hmm. So I move that we we go ahead and ask Heather to write it to consult with Keola mm -hmm. at um, on behalf of the committee. A second about the road specifically about the road yes specifically yeah. nothing else yeah yeah um do we want to include in the motion too that after the consultation that she can send the letter well i would just basically be drafting the letter that you would send yeah well i think we could vote to get you to sign it too i think it's, oh, I mean, oh, it's okay up to you. Is, is there it? a protocol about the chair signing our inquiries from our Kona CDPAC or a member. <laughs> I'll 
that's a procedure question. I don't think I've actually I've actually um experienced that before. Um, Member ever drafted an inquiry on behalf of the clinic or a uh, CDP AC, or is it usually the chair? It would be like it. We've done inquiries in the form of like letters. Um, where, but but I think I, what I'm understanding is that you you're just going to reach out to kill the child's. Yeah, well, just to help me write the letter because I don't, I don't even know the names of things for the street exactly. But um, it's just an inquiry into the transportation planner, and should that letter, that inquiry, be signed by um, the chair, or can it just be signed by the mem a member of the Kona CDP AC? Kevin, can we? Yeah, Sorry. go ahead, Uncle Chair. Can the committee assign her that responsibility? Yes, I think I think you can just we can just vote on it that we assign Heather Karate to to do further research on the testimony that Mr. Kila Childs brought forward, um, including reaching out to the transportation planning staff at the planning department um, and any other relevant entities. Something like that, like a nice little catch all. And then that's just something you guys vote on. And then, um, and we can share that contact information with you, Hadley. And we can help facilitate that that conversation also, if you want. Okay, so with the transportation planning staff, with the trans transportation planning staff, and we can reach out to him. We have his information, Mr. Childs, and we can um, ask him if it's okay to share it with you. And yeah, and connect you guys that way. Yeah. Okay. So I amend my uh, motion to include the latter part about reaching out to the transportation planners. Yeah. We need a second. I'll second it. Okay. Any any more discussion? If not, all in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Nay. Hearing none. Okay. Um, we haven't put a time frame on the on the letter writing uh, that we're all going to be doing. What, what, do you, what do you guys think is realistic? Because uh, we probably want to have all that done at least a week or so before next yeah. generation. Yeah. Right? yeah. Right. So, I'm counting next week. So, When do we anticipate our next meeting to be, uh, Mary? It's too early to tell. We got um our next Kona meeting. Yeah, is June eighteenth. Yeah. So you need a week before that, right? At least to get. And it so, the, yeah, and then our chair meeting. Did we lock in uh, the 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 yeah. fourth or the fifth? Um. The fourth. We the lock fourth in? we locked in. Okay. Somebody's changed it. With... Okay. The third wasn't acceptable because Charlie was busy, so it got moved to the fourth. Yeah. I will not be able to make it. I'll be in a totally different time zone, but I could make the 25th the next Tuesday That if we don't have quorum. Okay. Um, maybe a little tentative quorum check right now. Um, are there other members that might have difficulty for the 18th? I'll be here. I assume I'll be here. I'll be here. I'll be here. June 18th. Yeah. And who are we missing? Roslyn, would you be available for June 18th? I'm available. Hey, my schedule is unpredictable, so I, I, I'm not sure. So it gets closer okay. to that. Okay. Okay. You're traveling on the 18th or on the 4th? The 18th. On the 18th. I will. Okay. There's no way I can be. And so then it would be, if not Rosin, we would need Gary. Oh, we also have a new, I don't, I'm assuming not by then though. You guys have a, a pending AC application, AC nomination. Um, I miss Daisy Mitchell's, I believe. Let me pull up. 
and I believe she's going through council hearings now. I'm not too sure she'll have. We don't know if she'll get the the nomination and then all or get past council, and then she'll also have to take an oath. So I'm not entirely sure if she'll be available for. Is that Gary? Wait, wait. Gary. What about him? Just <coughs> if he's okay. I don't know. I haven't, has, 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 has anybody heard anything from him, Gary? Yeah, I'm just curious. So we need to reach out to Gary also to see if he'll be available. If Gary is not, um, and how does the committee feel about the 25th so that we have quorum with Heather? I'm available on the 25th if we can't do the 18th. Okay. I'm Are you available, available on the 25th if we don't? Have I the... propose the 25th. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. It's June 25th. I, I may be off island. Mm -hmm. June 25. Yeah, June 25. I have a yes from Nancy. I have a yes from Heather. David? Yes from David. Uncle Charlie? I'm good on the point. Okay. And John? The baby. I, I'm not sure yet. Okay. Know. Yeah. Like okay. Well, we'll double check venue space also. Um, um, and also we'll we'll work on reaching out to to Gary. Okay. Um, if we if we decide it's the twenty fifth, Miriam, then we're gonna move. Are we planning to move our uh, uh, chair vice chair meeting to the eleventh, or we're still looking at the fourth? I was gonna leave it at the fourth. The eleventh is a holiday. Um, yeah. But if you guys want to push it, we can. But I was just kind of just let it be ready because the sooner we have that meeting, the sooner we can post the agenda. Okay, good. Then how about how about we set ourselves a deadline to get all the, the letters drafted at least by the fourth? Yeah. That gives awesome. us a right, gives us a week to kind of review and stuff. And then you post on the eleventh if if it's the twenty fifth. Or yeah, I'm sorry, if it's the 18th. Yeah. Okay. That's that's a that's a great deadline. Okay, so let's give ourselves a little for it. Okay. Anything else on two? If not, we'll, we'll close that item. Um, and then let's discuss agenda for next meeting. We're going to at least have the letters. Okay. Do you want to keep uh, Palakahe Regional Park on the agenda for next month, John? Yeah, sure. Yeah. yeah. No, John, I think our um, letter is almost written because so we could, I, I mean, maybe we could even get together and do that tomorrow because it'd be great if we could try to push for an update in the next meeting from the Parks and Rec, try to get that yeah. on the agenda. Yeah, tomorrow, tomorrow maybe, yeah. Mm -hmm. we, could, we could do it I sooner mean, than later, yeah. It, it would take us nothing. Yeah. I, mean, yeah. I think it's almost there. I'll, I'll send I mean, you my repeat question about what the mandate for the R1 is oh, yeah. because I still don't think that that's necessarily like Hale was brought up at the last meeting it could be done in phases it shouldn't hold up the park as far as I'm concerned yeah yeah and I still haven't seen where that's written in black and white that, that that's codified as a requirement yeah I, I think it'd be great if parks and rec can come to the next meeting as an agenda item yeah. I just we don't have control or full control but we could we try know when they're going to respond I mean, in our letter we could yeah. ask yeah. that they come well, that's what the point of the letter is yeah yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah I think you get that out yeah. yeah yeah so I'm traveling next week I'm going to be gone from the 27th to the first the rest of this week's slam for me send maybe Friday with regards to the pigs and the planning, we should probably have a discussion about, about that. I don't know what we, for the, the budget meeting, or we can leave that to later. Yeah, I think that could be left okay. to later. Okay. The letter. I, 
yeah. water department is more. I'll try and get that out before I go. Mm -hmm. And get it to Mary and then she'll see it. Okay. Now, I don't know what, you know, whenever they reply is when we'll get them on the jet. Well, I think for the parks and rec, we should try to try and push that influence the, the date yeah. and say we'd like them to per, yeah. come All right. this date. Okay, so as soon as, 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 soon as can for you, for you and John. Yeah, okay. yeah we'll yeah. do it this week. Okay, and if I need to sign, you'll have to, you might have to email it to me or something, through the docu sign or something, but Marion will probably do that. And I'm going to be trying to... Should, should we... Um, change the motion for John and I to write the letter, just have it come from us so we yeah, aren't. That's fine. So I'll move for the letter to Parks and Rec about the an update on the KLKA Park, old days, and the, our questions about the parks to come from the two of us. I, I second. So we're just amending a previous motion to yeah. not have the just to make it easier yeah, for yeah, you so to that the travel. chair doesn't have to sign. Yeah. And we're gonna sign it. Okay. Okay, we got a second and then just a vote then for yep. everybody. Yep. Unanimous. Okay. okay. All in favor, please. Aye. 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 Oppose, nay. Okay, hearing none. Thank you. Alrighty then. Um uh, if there's no more on two, we the next agenda item again is um, the letters we said. What else were we gonna? What else do we wanna have for discussion? We're gonna try and get our parks and recs here if possible. Maybe the water supply. Maybe the. I mean, it would be crazy to have a parks and recs and water update in the same meeting. That would be too much. It's probably too, probably so, too much. So right. We'd probably want the water to be the next one. Or... Whoever then... responds first before the deadline. Let's just see where, <laughs> see, we don't have to, we, we're probably going to meet on the, on the agenda on the fourth. Yeah. If you have any ideas, then between now and the fourth, we, we can firm those up. And then uh, send it into Mary, and then we'll, we'll. And we don't have to set the agenda on the fourth. We won't have to set it until the eleventh if we go up on the or on the eleventh, even if we go up on the eighteenth. Okay. We good. We good. Okay. We need a motion to adjourn. I'll motion to adjourn. No second the motion to adjourn. Nancy. All in favor, indicate by saying aye. 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 Okay, meetings adjourned. 219. Great Thank job. you. Thank you, everybody. Mary and everybody. Thank you. That helped. Yeah.